everybody. I'm Kevin Fowl, the Editor-in-Chief of Boating Magazine. Welcome to this episode of Boating Roundtable, where we're going to discuss gasoline fuel storage in boats. Should you fill your tank or should you empty your tank? We're going to discuss what engine makers have to say. Stick around for that. We're going to talk about our personal experiences and give loads of tips about storing fuel. But first, a little housekeeping. Sign up and subscribe to our channel. If you like these videos, you'll see more of them. And look in the comments below for handy links for more information on the content we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about storing fuel in your fuel tank over the winter for long periods of time. It can be a problem. Jim Hendricks, how about telling the, us about some of the problems that can occur with fuel that's stored for more than two months? Well, it's, it's basically water in the fuel, and it's a result of condensation, largely a daily temperature fluctuations where the temperature might go might shift as much as 50 degrees during the day on the hot side the, the air holds the moisture but as it cools down the moisture drops out of that air now the air gets sucked into the through the vent into the fuel tank and then the moisture forms on the sides of the of fuel tank and then eventually will drop down into the into the fuel during storage um, and that can create problems it doesn't matter what kind of fuel you have whether it's regular pure gas or but new problems have been occurring with uh, ethanol and gasoline which we can you know what will happen is you'll start to get phase separation so storage options uh, you know range from no no fuel in the tank to a full fuel tank and manufacturers have different recommendations well let's see um, you know I know personally people who have filled the tank which is, uh, you know, used to be before the days of ethanol fuel, you filled the tank, you added stabilizer, that minimized the airspace in the tank and thus minimized the amount of condensation that could form and you were good to go. With this ethanol fuel, there's problems. I mean, we know of people, I personally know of many people who have filled the tank, added stabilizer, and had the whole load go bad. And, you, when, you know, when you get 80 gallons, 100 gallons, 300 gallons of gasoline become bad, it's very expensive to get rid of it. Either get rid of it in an environmentally uh, uh, appropriate way or to have the fuel reconditioned. Right. Randy Vance, you had some personal experience with fuel going bad and you had to rectify it. It was very costly for you, wasn't it? It was. It cost you about $3 per gallon capacity of your tank and I had a 70 gallon tank to dispose of gas. I did find a fuel polisher and for that same three bucks, he pumped it out, ran it through a filtration system, and he separated the unburnable sludge from the gasoline, and then he um, enhanced it with a fuel additive and returned it back to its octane level. That was still three bucks. So three times uh, one hundred and seventy dollars gets to be a pretty pricey fix. Right, right, right. Now, so the controversy remains. There are a lot of a lot of people, uh, a lot of boaters who keep their tank empty. And, you know, it had been uh, for a while, some manufacturers had been recommending that, uh, depending upon where you were. If you were in a dry climate and or you could get your hands on ethanol free gas, well, then it was kind of uh, like, you know, fill the tank with ethanol free gas. But if you had to get E10 and you lived in a damp environment, a lot of people were not filling the tank, risking more condensation. But their exposure to what you had to go through, if they run the tank down at the end of the season and the gas goes bad over the, the winter, all they had was 10 or 15 gallons of bad fuel to deal with instead of a tank load. Let's see. We, we went around the room, uh, uh, around the industry, and had our editors poll major engine manufacturers to ask them what their recommended procedure for storing gasoline is. Garrett Cortez, let's start with you. Who did you speak with, and what did they have to say? I spoke with uh, the group of Malibu. They make the monsoon engines for their Malibu and Axis uh, wakeboard wake surf boats, and they recommend storing full and using additives uh, just to try and preserve the gas as long as possible to prevent that separation that Jim mentioned. Um, and so, and I grew up with Malibus uh, pre EFI and still have one that's now a little bit newer EFI and we still store it full. Uh, that was back in California where I grew up and then here in Florida now, um, store it full. That, that's their recommendation and fingers crossed haven't had any problems, but. That's good information, Garrett, thanks. 
Pete McDonald, what engine company did you contact, and what did it have to say about storing gasoline in boats? Well, interestingly, I reached out to Honda Marine, and I got back a word from Kevin Liu, the product planner there, and uh, he recommended draining your engine and fuel tank between seasons to prevent gasoline deterioration. Uh, that's, uh, according to them, the best thing you can do to keep your fuel system uh, from having the problems that, that Randy experienced. However, I, they do recognize that for a lot of people, it's not practical if you have a 200 gallon tank to burn 200 gallons off at the end of the season. So in that case, they recommend filling your tank and adding a uh, stabilizer and running your engine for 10 minutes so that the fresh fuel with stabilizer gets into your entire fuel system. Jim Hendricks, who did you speak with? And what did uh, that company or companies have to say about fuel storage? I spoke with uh, Suzuki Marine and I, I spoke with Dave Greenwood, who's their technical guy there. He said, store the tank full uh, during long-term storage. Also, add stabilizer. He was very emphatic about that. But um, then I also spoke with Indemar. Uh, they're an inboard uh, manufacturer, also make engines for stern drives. Uh, Indemar recommends that you store the tank full as well. And that really, that's regardless of whether you have a pure gas or you have E10, uh, store the tank full and ha have it stabilized. Okay, I myself spoke to the folks at Volvo Penta and their technical and engineering staff got back to me and they said, I quote, empty the fuel tank of water, dirt, or sludge. Good way to do that is fuel the, through the fuel sender, by the way. Uh, fill completely with fuel to prevent condensation. Use a fuel stabilizer, of course, such as Volvo Penta ethanol fuel treatment. And year-round use of a stabilizer is recommended with every fill-up. Randy Vance, what boat companies, uh, engine companies rather, did you speak with, and what did they have to say about storing fuel? Ray Atchison at uh, Mercury Marine in charge of parts, um, he said, first thing, stabilize your fuel no matter what you do. Tries to, try to avoid leaving ethanol in it. Try to burn non-ethanol when you can, and stabilize that. But he's got two different approaches to fuel storage. If you live or you store your boat in a dry, temperature-stable climate, you can leave it empty or half empty, whatever, you know, at the end of the year, because it's that breathing in and out as the air expands and contracts that brings in fresh, moisturized air that uh, con condenses and falls into the gas. You avoid that in a dry or a temperature climate, temperature control climate. If you're in a humid temperature up, temperature down climate, he wants you to fill the tank up after stabilizing the fuel. And in both cases, as someone already said here, run that fuel through your fuel system so that it's in all of the injectors or carburetors, depending on how you deliver fuel to your combustion chamber. Did anyone get any intelligence on whether there should be some space left at the top of the tank? Yeah, sorry, so yeah, can we fill the tank completely or fill it 90% to leave room for expansion? You should, you should leave some airspace. It will expand. Yamaha's advice, on the other hand, is just straight across, seven-eighths of a tank, leave it there, stabilized. That'll minimize the amount of condensation that can come in and eliminate uh, and, and minimize the uh, water that will be in the tank. Now, it'll be interesting to see, for those who know, we here at Boating Magazine realize the new evaporative emissions uh, equipment that's been installed in boats in recent years, designed to keep fuel fumes from evaporating into the environment and creating air pollution in that way, sort of, sort of isolates the boat's fuel system from the environment. And I wonder, and we wonder, whether or not that will uh, help fuel to, to remain in good condition while stored, since it's sort of semi-isolated from the environment and not as subject to those diurnal temperature swings uh, and heat cold condensation cycles that can occur with a more open system, a more traditional exposed vent to the air system. Randy Vance, I think you have a surprise for our viewers and readers uh, about that. You want to share a little? Well, well, I had that same question and I didn't get an answer to it. Uh, neither Yamaha nor Mercury had tested those systems to see if there's an influence on those non-evaporative systems. But I'm, I'm working on a test right now for a boating lab and we're going to test um, 
non-evaporative fuel containers, fuel containers that are open to the air. We'll do it with and without um, fuel treatment, with and without uh, ethanol. Okay, we'll look forward to that. Once again, thank you for joining us here at Boating Roundtable. I'm here with Garrett Cortez, Pete McDonald, Jim Hendricks, and Randy Vance. Tune in for our next episode. We'll be doing these weekly. Sign up, subscribe if you like these videos so we make more. Check the comments for more information, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.